So I'm going to do a short recap before this whole idea. Um, so these are magnets mounted on a disc, and then I've got little ones to the side here. And when you spin this, it makes a movement, seemingly reactionless thrust. So after Jeremiah told me about this thing, I built one and it worked just like his did. He put his in a box and it still moved. So I'm like, that's interesting. So I went and I built, well, basically it seemed to me like mm, this was magnetic pressure and you're making a magnetic vacuum in the middle, basically like fluid dynamics with magnetism. So that was my assumption. And then, um, I thought, gosh, if I want to test that, I better do something else. So I took a steel sphere and two matching coils. I know they look a little different, but they are uh, identical coils. And um, I turned both of the coils on at the same time and then turned one of them off first. And it created movement with this. I had it sitting with a lid on it, uh, hanging from the ceiling. So it created movement. I'm like, well, that's neat. So I'm like, I need to try this in other ways. So here's an iron cube, two inch square cube. And uh, I've wrapped it with magnetic coils on all three axes. I powered up two of them with um, 90 degree phase difference. So it makes a rotating field. And then I stuck the magnets on one side trying to unbalance that. And this also created movement. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm going to try another version. So I did rebar with a coil on each end. And that, when you turn them both on at the same time, and then you turn off one of them first, it creates movement as well. What I didn't expect to happen is I set up this one and uh, put a coffee cup hanging from the ceiling. And when I pulsed this... Um, the, the coils managed to move the coffee cup, remember, on at the same time, off separately. And that moved the coffee cup, so that was pretty neat. So I've got this whole model in my head of magnetic fluid dynamics, I guess you'd call it. And it's, it's, I mean, other people would call it warping space, but I realized the internal orbits of all that make up everything in the matter is... Um, all these internal orbits. If the pressure is lower or higher, it speeds it up and slows it down. It definitely messes with it. But I also know from my little time field meter here that um, if you compare clock frequencies, there's two different clocks on either end of this. They run at 20 megahertz, then compared in the middle and output on the little LED. I hook it up to the oscilloscope because it's really hard to see. And with 20 million times a second, you will see a difference of about 10 times a second, so it's a really small change. But the time fields are persistent and um, or whatever I used to call it time fields. Now I realize magnetic pressure, way better description. Anyway, um, so how in the world is it holding on to it? I think I figured it out. So here's a bagel coil. This one is a left hand helix, the way it's wound. And this ends up making a negatively charged item. I know this from my high voltage wand. I can repel it or attract it. Just AC into the coil will get repel or attract. Uh, and this one makes a negative um, polarity item. So I thought that was interesting all on its own. But the big realization is fields like this that are stable end up holding this magnetic or pressure vacuum in it. And if you guys remember from a previous video, this device here, it's got 50 steel segments. It makes uh, magnetic and electric vortexes, but it's counter-rotating. Because let's imagine this device for a moment. If you start spinning it and there's no side magnets, the magnetic fluid in the room just starts orbiting with it and all just sucks back into the middle. But if you've got something to break up that field, then, uh, <laughs> then it's going to make thrust one direction. So this little device down here, it made this magnetic vacuum in it, but it also made the bagel coil field. It made two of them, I guess one for each disc, and then that squished into a sphere. And I mapped that out with the uh, 
magnetic permeability meter. And I always wondered how in the world um, did it um, basically keep the, the magnetic pressure in with this model. And I thought about the multimeter leads from an experiment with the, uh, the counter-rotating fields. And the multimeter leads became basically zero resistance. And it took them about five years to fade back up to uh, 0.7 ohms where they started. And then I realized bagel coil fields, that's what makes up basically the um, fundamental particles. And they can hold magnetic pressure. So it's not just magnetic pressure making all these devices work. It is, um, <laughs> that's how it's doing it. The magnetic fresh pressure is getting contained in these kind of fields. Uh, a note on that, the, the rebar test here absolutely wiped out my energy 100%. I was devastated with it. Same with this one, pulses. This one orbits, no problem there. This one uh, and I think it's it's the AC version or, or DC. Is it just moving uh, through or is it being pulsed? The pulse ones absolutely wiped me out. Like the opposite of what this does with the charge clusters from the sky. And I th used to think it was just the charge clusters, just the bagel coil fields, tiny microscopic, that made this thing work. Now I'm starting to think it's the magnetic pressure inside the bagel coil fields that's making the big difference. If anyone remembers uh, Sinclair's Qi Energy Amplifier, I know this is not quite the right shape. I've got the little antenna here. Um, everyone I've hooked up to, it's like I don't feel anything. And then after about three to five minutes, they feel entirely different. So I believe this device adds the energy in. This one pulls it out. Um, and it makes complete sense. You change the magnetic pressure inside all the atoms that make up the clock chip and it literally runs at a different speed uh, for the time. Anyway, it's uh, just a really neat idea that the bagel coil can hold that pressure and it goes along perfect with the idea of the uh, magnetic pressure is basically how you engineer all these new bits of hardware. You know, you tell somebody to warp space and they're going to be a little lost. You tell them change the magnetic pressure, well, that's something they can do. just turns out to be the same thing. Anyway, uh, yep, I think that's all I wanted to share. I'll uh, start modeling magnetic fluid dynamics and you can do a lot of neat stuff. Okay, bye.